question related to gender-based uh, displacement. I was the one who mentioned that uh, workers in the, women workers uh, in the textiles, clothing, and footwear industry will be uh, mostly affected because in this uh, industry you will find uh, predominance of, uh, of uh, uh, women, and especially because the kind of uh, work that is being performed in this uh, uh, industry, especially by women workers, are uh, in the nature of uh, routine tasks, which are the tasks that will be precisely uh, affected, adversely affected by uh, the, the raging uh, te technological uh, revolution. So what should government do? I think uh, not, not only government, but also uh, private uh, sector uh, uh, efforts to uh, train, retrain uh, this worker to acquire uh, uh, new skills related to uh, to technology uh, should be you know, should be promoted, uh, encouraged, and uh, and uh, strengthened. I'd like to add my thoughts on the whole gender question um, and how women could be disadvantaged by the fourth industrial revolution. Um, on the education front. Our data shows that actually women are, mi are the minority in STEM related courses in colleges and universities. What does STEM mean? Science, technology, engineering, and math. So as you can see, you need a lot of you know, technological know-how, doing cutting edge research. Um, and if, and a study by, by, by PBED, when we did a study on the pipeline for science, tech, engineering, and math, for every seven, uh, for every 100 grade one students, only seven end up with a qualification that will allow them to work in science and technology. And out of the seven, kung minority pa don babae, how can you really, you know, take part in fire, right? At the first, at the fourth industrial revolution. So it's also a numbers game. There are fewer women in science and tech. And so one of the things that we can do is really encourage our girls um, to try STEM. So even though it's not the traditional um, career options for many of our women, um, try out STEM and, and we, should, we should really work together to support their journey so that the seven becomes more and then you'll have more people and more women specifically to be that are qualified to work in in a STEM profession or a science and technology profession. Another layer also, and um, this is maybe uh, speaking as a woman, um, many of our women are actually educated. Mo mo in many countries, the problem is not enough girls go to school. In our case, more boys drop out of schools. But the problem is, even though our women are educated, more educated than our men, once they, uh, have a family. They don't use their education and they take care of their families and they don't work. And so um, I'm not saying that having a career is better than you're taking care of the family. It's very important to take care of your family. But another thing that we might want to um, think about, and employers are very important here, is for those women who have taken time off to take care of their families that are educated, how can we? allow them to re-enter the workforce should they want to do so, right? And what are the social safety nets to make sure that we still harness the education that they've invested in so that we really grow together as a people when it comes to this whole context of the fourth industrial revolution. So two points, um, the numbers game, we need to improve our numbers, and secondly, um, again, those off and on success ramps for women who might um, opt out and opt in of the workforce as they go through their lives. Agriculture? <laughs> I'll respond to the question raised on agriculture. Um, over the last, um, last uh, 10 years, uh, I have here some uh, figures with respect to the growth performance of the agricultural sector. 
from 2000 to 2009, it posted a growth rate of 3.2%, while manufacturing posted uh, the same rate, 3.2%. Services is 5.2%. But in the more recent period, this is from 2010 to 2017, um, manufacturing grew by 7.6%, services by 6.7%, agriculture uh, slowed down from 32 to 1.4%. So um, essentially what I'm saying is uh, the agricultural sector has actually been the weakest link in, um, in the country, though uh, our uh, gross domestic product has been um, growing at a remarkable rate. Um, and and um, manufacturing has been a major driver, but not, um, not, not agriculture. And what, wh why, why, um, why this, uh, why this um, perform weak performance of the manufacturing industry? Um, a lot of this, um, of course, um, a lot of the problems uh, we, we, for instance, in rice, in sugar, um, there are certain policies there that I think uh, we need to review and we need to um, we need to change, but in in, in the in uh, the rice sector, um, there is already a uh, move to tarify, um, uh, that move towards tarification in order to ensure that uh, the supply would be adequate and, and uh, prices would uh, wouldn't uh, be fluctuating because it's really really um, be becoming more uh, difficult. Um, and the same is true for for sugar, where it. We still have uh, this protectionist policy as well as our uh, domestic policy of classifying uh, sugar, um, controlling the supply, um, classifying sugar into A, B, C, D, E, and I think there's still an F. Um, and, and, and so we need to uh, take a look at our own um, domestic policies uh, with, and, and their impact on the productivity of the sector. Uh, even before we uh, we try to we try to look at uh, what the impact of in the, in the, the fourth industrial revolution is going to be. We need to look at the basics. Um, but at the same time, um, it's also important because uh, these new technologies could uh, actually catalyze the growth of, uh, of, of the sector because right now um, productivity has been low, there's a supply constraint, and though uh, there's been a lot of potentials for agricultural high value crops like coconut, mangoes, and other fruits. Um, and then we have cacao, we still have coffee. Uh, we have other other resource-based crops like rubber. The country is actually very rich, but um, but at the same time, it's um, it's really, um, yeah, we're, we're having a lot of uh, problems in terms of uh, uh, being able to market, uh, market these products abroad. They're, well, the potentials are there, the market actually is there, but we don't have the, ne the, the necessary supply. And um, I've, um, in, in, in one of the uh, slides that I've earlier presented, said that agriculture, the agricultural sector is actually one of our uh, top uh, priorities. And the reason is, uh, man, if you look um, across the different regions, if we look at the structure of the regional economies, many of them um, are actually depending a lot on agriculture. Um, manufacturing is highly concentrated in Region 4A, Calabarzon area, in Central Luzon, as well as in still in the National Capital Region. Um, services is highly dominated by NCR, but uh, and the rest of the regions are all. Um, they, they, they depend a lot on uh, agriculture, but given the weak performance of the sector, um, given its low productivity, how can we then uh, transform our regional economies? And um, I, I, I think this is uh, where our innovation policies would, would come in, where our industrial policies would really come in. Um, right now, DEI is actually um, in charge of marketing the manufactured products. But on the production side, it's uh, the responsibility of the Department of Agriculture. And so um, we've been advocating really for, uh, you, you've seen it in my pre presentation, more collaboration, more coordination uh, within, uh, within the government and then government with academe as well as with industry. So um, it, it's really very important that uh, uh, we all work together um, in order to uh, improve the productivity 
of the agricultural sector and in order for us to take advantage and harness the opportunities from Industry 4.0, a lot of people are already actually leaving the agricultural sector. They don't, our, our youth, of course, they don't want, they don't want to uh, work in agriculture and they would rather go into services. And, and so uh, by automation, introducing technology, um, maybe in agriculture that's one way by which we could improve uh, our productivity given also that uh, a lot of the a lot of our um, a lot of the lands are actually being converted to be used into something else again uh, how can we make use of uh, technology to uh, because uh, food security is still um, uh, again another another uh, important objective and so we need to really have a but a lot of balancing to do, uh, ensuring that we're able to develop um, our our uh, regions, ensuring that we would have um, enough food, ensuring that uh, at the same time uh, we will be able also to take advantage of the opportunities outside. And uh, and uh, we're, we're 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 working closely with uh, the DA in uh, responding to this uh, to this question. Um, let me just add to what uh, everybody has been saying. Um, one earlier, when I was giving presentations and videos, I uh, there was uh, I showed you already a, this video of an AI ap application where essentially in, for cassava plants, uh, making use of um, artificial intelligence, machine learning by taking a, a, a photo of a leaf of the cassava plant, you can identify whether the the cassava it has uh, some kind of diseases. But after that video, there's another video of the use of drones in um, farms. And so uh, we're, as, just to complement what Asik Tito was saying uh, earlier about partnerships, the partnerships of industry and uh, sh should be there with agriculture to actually maximize the use of technology because unfortunately sometimes we tend to take a step back and we're in a way maybe not just on industry 2.0 but even industry 1.0 you know so um, but at the same time uh, it's not just partnerships but unfortunately sometimes when we tend to even have human capacity development strategies they tend to be one size fits all we don't we don't retrofit our strategies to the specific vulnerabilities of people, whether it's women, whether it's farmers, who may have different interests. We don't, we all think that, hey, everybody should learn this. Uh, there are certainly some basic skills everybody should know. But at the same time, you need to recognize that everybody has different varying interests and you need to maximize those interests and show them, hey, you know, these are things that you can actually make use of, especially in the, uh, in the case of technology.